it's me, Lexi49 here, and I'm back with another video in an itching eye. So, I've needed to do this video way too long. It's been months, and I really need to record it. And I did a long time ago in, I think, September or October or November. I don't know, but that doesn't matter. I haven't uploaded this video. It is a video everyone has waited super long for. The Lattice Cast Net completion video. If you don't know, if you're new, if you don't understand what this is, a long time ago, I decided, hey, let's do a, doc a progress log on making my Lattice Cast Nets. I also have one for my Trevi Bell, but that is still not complete, so. Yeah. But the castanets are, and they have been for a long time. So I'm finally bringing you the video you have wished for for a while. So the original castanets were those red and blue children castanets. I talked about them in a video of the Strawberry Bell. I think it was part three, if I'm correct. It was when I was sanding the bell for the first time. Or actually it was the second time, I think, but whatever. It's in that video. And if you look inside, you can still see some of the blue and some of the red inside the castanets because I didn't really pay as much attention to the inside as I did the outside. But they originally started off as those types of castanets and they were strung with pink elastic to be like this. I was originally gonna keep the elastic in, but after scouring YouTube for a bit, I was like, okay, you know what? This isn't how an actual castanet is. Let's just cut it, and that is where the original Lettuce Cast Net video happened, or something like that. It's been a long time, so I don't remember specifics. And in the original first part, they were unpainted and they were separate, so you can see how they originally looked there. Then, once I had them separate, I painted both pieces with this green this dark green Americana paint, at least I think it's Americana because when I bought it, there was a bunch of glitter all over the cap because someone probably spilled like glitter fabric paint or something like that on it. It was luckily dry, but still wasn't pleasant at all. So I painted them probably two to three coats of that. Um, I did not have a white base. I mean, I probably have like an off-white somewhere, but it's old and crappy. So why use the crappy paint? Because um, a lot of my old paint, well, is old and it's gooey and gross. So I wasn't gonna go there. But if I had a white base, it would probably pop more. So then after that, I took this green folk art. I'll put the names in the description along with their numbers. And I started painting the pattern. I'm turning it to the back as it's easier to see from the back. So what I did is I'm pretty sure this is going clockwise, mine. Um, but with a picture of the castanets up on my phone for reference, you know, it doesn't really matter what it is. It could be your actual, it could be like a, you know, a part of it on like a the anime on DVD or something or whatever. But what I did was I just looking at it, I under I probably outlined these pieces, but now looking at it, I probably didn't. What I did was I went from probably, I'm gonna guess the outside to the inside because it gets gradually thinner. Um, and I just painted the swirling parts. So that's how I got the swirling effect. And of course the Americana green was completely dry by then. And you know, I just did that. And on the backs, you can see they aren't really polished, but for the front, it doesn't matter. It was just gonna get covered up anyway. So I have no idea how the front ever looked and I'm not ripping these off to find out. So just use the back for reference on how it would look there. So yeah. So then for the decorations on the front, I had this paper board laying around, so I cut it to these little shapes and yes I know there's actually indentions probably like that I think but 
it's so small and it's not really a material I can dig into without accidentally cutting because it's so thin. It's basically paper thin because it's paper bird. Then with a sharpie, gold sharpie, I basically just did it on both. I don't think I did it on both sides, but I totally colored the cardboard pieces on both of them. And then once that was done, I took clear nail polish. You probably would be better off with Mod Podge, but I didn't use my Mod Podge because I didn't really have much Mod Podge at the time anyway, because I've used it on other little projects that didn't matter. But then I would, I paint these pieces with clear nail polish. And for the uh, heart, how I got it, how I did that one was I just traced the heart under I think a piece of paper, then trace a little more away from it and then cut it out and then I use that stencil same with these except I don't really have anything for those I just drew them and I folded the paper I think so I got them pretty even then I glue them onto the castanet using Mod Podge and I'm going to assume the castanet has already been sealed with Mod Podge once and I'm using I think a satin or matte Mod Podge so it doesn't have a super shiny shine to it and then um, after gluing that, I'm pretty sure I glued the heart down using, you know, Mod Podge. So, now they're looking more like cast nets. Now, the edges are still green at this point, so then I color them in using a Sharpie. And I know you're like, uh, there's a lot of shipping, but that's because I've had to repair them a few times, and I don't think the Mod Podge on that side worked. These sides were, well, not that side, but the sides worked, so... They're pretty chippy, especially up up top, but no one's really gonna see that. Then, after that, sorry, I'm a uncomfortable here. Then, after that, what I did is I just painted the entire thing using Mod Podge. And this is, of course, when they're still separate pieces, so they're probably totally separate. They aren't one whole thing yet. Then, I just take this pink shoelace. I got it over the holidays. So, yeah, I just I had it laying around. Actually, yeah, I got it over the holidays, I think. Yay, somewhere. I'm not sure when I actually got these, now I'm thinking about it, because I'm like, like, because I'm just like, wait, when did I get these laces? But I got them somewhere, probably, say, for my birthday at one point. But I had them laying around, and I was like, I've never used these, really. I mean, I've used them, like, once or twice. They aren't bad. So what I did was I cut the uh, tips of them off. I forgot what they're called. And then I cut them in half, which I ended up using, I think, one and a half since I messed up a few times, and I couldn't unknot these. So, yep. So then... I strung them and I used this video. It's uh, I think how to string a castanet on YouTube. I think I found it by searching just for that up. So now I have it properly strung. But you could tie it in a different way if you wanted. I'm doing these so you can play them like an actual castanet, opposed to say like you know like that, like the that originally were. I went for a more traditional top. So now how I actually play them, and I'll put that one on in a moment. Basically, once you have it strung, you basically just do that. You put it on your thumb like that, and you can tighten it. Again, I don't know what type of knot this is tied in. I think it's a slip knot, but I can't be sure. But yeah, and then you can play it. And I'll put the other one on, too, real quick. I'm not really prop, like, I'm just really rushing to put these on at the moment. Just so I can do the video. Get this half dope with. So, yeah. So, now they can play. They have a pretty nice sound. So, yes. And if you are a cosplayer using these for cosplay, to photograph, I guess, you know, just holding them like this or like this would probably do a pretty good photograph or if you're just going around and 
you could just leave them on your thumb like this and then when people take a photograph of you you could just like quickly go into pose if you just left them on your hands while you walk around but you know that would probably get annoying after a while so yeah but yeah so um that is also why because of how i wear them that's why up here gets scuffed a lot one day i'll probably get a proper gold paint or a new gold sharpie and go over it again but yeah so yep so that's basically it for the castanets if you have any questions on how i made them leave them in the comments but that doesn't mean we're done with this video you have been waiting for updates on the strawberry belt haven't you mm, my heart now <laughs> but uh basically what's going on with the strawberry bell is i'm currently covering it in school glue at the moment to smooth out the foam and then once i'm done i'm gonna go over it with acrylic paint the same acrylic paint that i originally planned to use so basically i'm going with my original plan of acrylic paint opposed excuse me opposed <laughs> to the spray paint i was using and this is a really close color the nozzle on this thing is absolute crap. It sprays terribly. So even though it might look tricky, considering it worked, even though these are smaller, it worked on the castanets, it should be fine on the bell. So yeah, there it is. So yeah, and you know, I will start doing update videos on this. It's just now I'm gonna use my actual camera and not my phone because I realized my phone it looks terrible on it. I've watched my videos. It's absolute crap. But yeah, so that was the completion video on the Gladys Cast Nets. So as always, if you like this video, like this video. If you favorite this video, favor this video. If, wait, no. Comment your opinions and subscribe if you want to. Peace out. Have a great day. See you next time. <laughs> Bye.